Hi folks, I'm Mark with ProLine Range Hoods and today we're going to talk about how to install our PLJW 129 30 and 36 inch model. Now the first thing you're going to need for the tools, you're going to need a level. So we have a level to identify, uh, to level up the range hood and to establish a plumb line. You'll need a pencil, you'll need a tape measure, you'll need a drill. Now if you haven't already cut your sheetrock, you'll need a, uh, for the vent, you'll need a sheetrock uh, saw. Um, I've got a couple extra markers, uh, a couple of screwdrivers, then I've got some extra fasteners. We probably won't need these. I've got an extra utility knife to help me open the box. Now what to expect in the package, um, you're going to get the instruction manual uh, in the package. You're going to get a packet of hardware. Now this is your mounting hardware and it's also your hardware for your handles for your baffle filters and your hardware to help you mount the duct transition. We'll go over that in just a second. So for this model, we have three baffle filters. We'll go over the assembly of those later. We have a rubber gasket that goes on the bottom of our duct transition. This is a transition that screws into the top of the range hood and transitions to a six inch round uh, rigid or flex duct. You, we have the back of our main body range hood mounting plate and then we have our chimney mounting bracket and then we have our chimney extension pieces. Now these are white, they're still covered with the uh, protective plastic, we'll remove that before we do the install. Now we have, like I mentioned before, we've already uh, taken the hood out, we've plugged it in, uh, we can plug it into any outlet, we've tested it to make sure there's no hidden damage. We test these before they leave our factory and, and, our, and leave our, uh, our warehouse, but sometimes in rough handling, uh, sometimes we do run into problems and so it's always good to test before. So test the lights, we've tested the lights and we've tested all the speeds and it works fine. Okay, now we're here in our warehouse distribution testing facility, and this is where we're going to mount this. For our mounting purposes, we need the hood a little bit higher, so we've marked our horizontal line, and we've used our level and a pencil to mark that. You'll be able to see it. So we have our horizontal line here. This is where the bottom of the hood will be, and then I've marked a center line. Work all your measurements off of a center line. Now with that, in this application, we also do need to cut a circular hole to, to pass our vent through at the top. So I'll mark that in just a moment. And what I'll do is I will use the duct transition right now to, as my template for that. So I'll go ahead and I'll mark that right now. Now for us, I can see the knit line where the plastic comes together. So I know that that's my center. And I want to be out from the wall just a little bit and so and, it, and this doesn't have to be perfect of course the duct will cover this up so I'm just gonna go ahead and mark that like that and that's where I'm gonna cut because in this application we're gonna use a flex duct it's gonna be a little bit bigger I want to be just on the outside just on the outside of my line my hole for the ductwork and before we drop the ductwork down through the hole I'm going to mount my my chimney mounting bracket now I want to mount this before I drop the ductwork down because the ductwork will be in the way we're using flex ductwork if you're going to use rigid ductwork you could install that uh, at a later time but uh, I've marked a center line here and I'm going to line that up with my center line up there I'm going to use the fasteners that are included so I'll go ahead and install that now Now I've installed the upper chimney mounting bracket, goes right in the corner of the ceiling, and eventually the screws will attach to both sides to hold the upper portion of the chimney in place. Next I'll go ahead and drop the ductwork. Okay, we've cut the hole and we've dropped our ductwork down through. Now we're using flex duct for this. In, uh, you can use either a, a, an aluminum flex duct or a rigid six inch uh, piece of ductwork that you can get at Home Depot. Uh, we're opting to use a flex duct piece. And next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach our, uh, our duct transition to the top of the range hood using the four screws that are provided in, the, uh, in our kit. So we'll do that now. Now one of the things that you need to do, make sure you use the rubber adapter, that way you get a good seal. Okay, now the way that you'll want to do this is you'll install the gasket on the backdraft adapter with the flange side down and then you'll take your screws and the, the best way that I've found is to go ahead and insert the screws through and the gasket will hold them in place. And that way that the, the tension holds the gasket in place and holds the screws in place. 
So we insert the four screws and then we'll install it on the top of the hood. So we've set it in place. Now we'll just use a screwdriver. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to figure out where we need to drill our holes on the wall. So we're going to use our back plate, our main mounting plate, as a template to identify these exact points using a center line and a measurement from the top of the plate to the bottom of the range hood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one, one or two of the screws and I'll mount it so that I know exactly where the plate will go. And then I'm going to remove this and transfer that pattern to the wall. So, so I know that that's right where they need to be. Now this is exactly 14 and a half inches to the top of the plate. So from the bottom of my hood, where I want to mount it, I need to be 14 and a half inches to the top. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and make that line now and I need to be 14 and a half inches, then we'll draw a level line. So I need to be up from the bottom of my hood, exactly 14 and a half. I'll mark the mark right there, and now I'll draw a level line. So I've marked a level line where the top of my plate will go at 14 and a half inches from the bottom of my hood. So now I'll use the plate and what I will do, the plate is nine and a half wide so I'll need to be four and three quarters across so I'll mark that. Okay so I've marked the center of my plate now I'll use that and holding it on the line right here using, I, I've got it lined up so it's exactly in the center. There's my center of my plate, here's my center line, here's my level line across the top where my plate needs to go. And then what I want to do is mark these eyelets and those will be my mounting points. So it needs to end up being up here at the top. Now we've installed the sheetrock anchors where our plate will eventually anchor. Next is we're going to install the plate on the back of the range hood. So to do that, we'll use the enclosed screws, line up the threaded insert at the right hole, and then we'll, we'll install the six screws. Now we've got two fasteners that you can use. These are the sheetrock fasteners, the toggle fasteners. Um, now these, it's important to note, these are just to hold the hood in place while you're mounting it. Once you get, once you get the hood up in place, you'll need to put in uh, additional screws and find the studs to make sure that the hood is securely fastened to the wall. So we're going to identify where the studs are right now. Now we've identified where our main supporting stud is. So what we're going to do is once we mount the hood, we're going to install, up inside the hood, we're going to install a an additional couple of screws right in this area in order to make sure that we have the hood securely fastened to the wall. So I've marked the position of the stud right here at the bottom so that I can see it once the hood's up in place. Now I'm installing the screws that will eventually hold the plate. I've left these out about 3 16 of an inch. We'll go ahead and hang the hood and then we'll tighten those up in a second. So now we're ready to hang the hood. So now we've gone ahead and hung our hood on the mounting brackets and we'll go ahead and screw these screws in to tighten them up. Now as you'll recall, we identified our stud as being right here. So I'm going to transfer that line up above it so somewhere along that line I need to, to drill an additional hole. Now I want to drill it as high as possible so I can see that that's possible up inside the range hood. Now I also know that these studs are on 16 inch centers so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over here 16 inches away and I'm going to put a second or even a third uh, screw up inside and I'll drill through the back metal 
into the stud where, where the stud is. So I'm going to drill one. I'll probably drill three. I'll drill one on the left, and I'll drill two over here. So I've gone ahead, and we have, we have uh, drilled and put in place our three uh, retaining screws. And they are the screws that go through the back of the range hood into the studs in the wall. So the next thing I'll do is we'll run our, our power cord up. Now our outlets in this application are located on top. So I will sneak the power cord right through here on the side of my vent and then we'll plug it in on top. So I'm going to run that through and I'll pull it so that it's tight. And the next thing we'll want to do is we'll want to draw down our duct and we'll want to attach it to our transition. Use, and we'll just use some duct tape to do that. Now for this, I'm just using some metal duct tape. And we'll just wrap it around the back. And then we'll secure it firmly and make sure it has a good seal. Okay, we're ready to install the chimney. Now we've gone ahead and removed the protective plastic cover. Now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna slide the one, uh, very carefully slide the one piece down inside the other. I'm gonna set it up in place. We're going to set the bottom screws and then we're going to slide it up and set the top screws. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've attached the chimney at the four mounting points and you can see uh, with the telescoping motion it fills in the gap perfectly. So now I'll go ahead and clean it and we'll be done with uh, the top end of the range hood. Now the last step in the installation of the range hood is to assemble and install the baffle filters. Now we've gone ahead and we've already removed the plastic coating from these baffle filters. And just a word about the plastic coating. Sometimes the, pl the protective plastic coating on stainless steel is a little bit hard to remove and it'll come off in small pieces. You may want to use a hair dryer. In our case, it was real easy to remove it from the baffle filters, but it got a little difficult on the chimney. So when the camera wasn't rolling, we actually heated it up and removed it. It was a lot easier. So you may want to try that if that's the case. Now to, to assemble your baffle filters, you have a handle which attaches at this point and then screws will uh, attach it from behind. And then you also have a threaded uh, catch which you install this, you screw it into the uh, receiving hole right here that is threaded and then you can see that this will be your uh, catch mechanism at the front of the range hood. So we'll go ahead and assemble these and then we'll show you how to install them. Okay, now in assembling the baffle filters, the best way that we've found to do this is to lay the baffle filter flat. The handle will go here. You'll come up through. That way gravity holds the screw on. Um, and then you'll go ahead and attach it. So we'll thread it there. We'll let it sit for a second and we'll do the other one. So you come up through the hole and that saves you some time <laughs> trying to, uh, uh, if it just helps you so that you don't lose the screws inside the baffle filter. Okay, we finished with the assembly of the baffle filters and we've cleaned them. Now all that's left is to install these. So you'll start and you'll see that they fit in the pocket in the back and then you just slide the catch into the front recess. And there you have it. Um, it's installed, it's cleaned up. The last thing we can do is test it. You can see it works good. We'll run it through the speeds here. Turn the lights, both settings. And that's all there is to it. You can see it's easy. It, it should take the average person between an hour, hour and a half to install it the most. Anybody can do it. Uh, it's very simple, it's very easy. If you have any questions, you can go to our website or you can give us a call. Thanks for watching.